Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to part three of our four part series on how to produce a Shaded Harmony production. In this part we're going to talk about the filming process that we use to produce our videos. Um, and if you haven't seen parts one and two, I recommend you go back and look at them. Um, John talks in them basically about the audio side of our productions and how to record the audio and then how to edit it. So you should check those out first and then come back to this. So let's get right into it. The very first thing you want to do when starting to plan out a music video is obviously listen to the song. And you want to hear it and think about your interpretation of the song. Now what I like to do is I like to get together with John and we both kind of just talk about my interpretation and his interpretation and what he has in mind and what I have in mind. And then we kind of put those together to create a master plan. So once we have that basic plan down, the next thing to do is to start thinking of specifics for the video. So the place I like to start is with locations. I think you should start with locations, especially with lower budget filmmaking, because you don't necessarily know how your location is going to be if you plan things before your location. So I always plan things according to my location. So for most of our videos, we are just inside of a classroom in the College of Music. So it's pretty consistent and easy to plan. But say we want to do something outdoors, well then I need to think about where the outdoor location is and usually go scouting for locations before filming. And one helpful hint is it's nice to have at least two different locations in your music video so you can switch between them. So for instance if you have one where your musician, performer, say they're a vocalist and they're singing and they're singing in a studio, even in front of a mic or something but then you switch to an actual like scene happening outside of that, external, maybe it's outdoors or maybe it's indoors it's a different scene entirely one really good example that we did with this was from Happier where it went from being inside of a room that was mostly dark to being outdoors in the sun and walking down an alley. So if you're filming indoors, the first thing you're going to want to set up is your lighting. Now lighting is crucial to making a video that looks good. If you don't have good lighting, your video is not going to look professional at all. So you need to really be aware of the lighting you're using and make the most out of what you have. So the most typical lighting that people use is called three-point lighting, and you'll have your key light, your fill light, and your backlight. Now your key light is your brightest light, and it shines most directly on your subject. Your fill light comes slightly from the side, and it fills in any shadows that your key light creates. And your backlight comes from the back, so that it creates depth between your subject and whatever's in the background. Now I'm actually kind of using three-point lighting right now to film this, so I'm going to show you. So if you look, here's my camera, and here's my key light. So it's right in front of me, almost, in, almost straight in front of me, but not quite. My fill light is slightly off to the side. Now this is typically brighter than a fill light should be, but it's working to get the job done right now. Now I don't exactly have a backlight, but I do have a ceiling light that's casting light behind me that's enough to distinguish me from my background. Now three-point lighting is nice, it's the standard, but you can also do more experimental forms of lighting. Um, one of the coolest things I like to do is make use of like Christmas lights and things like that in videos and just other colored lighting and you can put filters on your lights too. There's a whole lot of different things to do and there's many different ways to experiment with them that you kind of just have to try yourself and see what you like. And of course, if you're shooting outdoors, you don't necessarily have to worry about setting up lights as much as you do making sure your camera settings make your subject look not too overexposed or underexposed, and that you're in good lighting and not stuck in shade or something like that. And the best time of day to shoot is either dawn or dusk, where the sunlight is a little less harsh and not directly above you, um, because when it's directly above you it's going to cause really weird shadows to appear on your face, and it's uneven lighting sometimes, where when it's dawn or dusk it's very even across the sky, and it's really easy to use with a camera. Now before you even go to your shoot, 
while you're still planning for your shoot, you should come up with a shot list. Now basically, if you don't know what a shot list is, it's a comprehensive list of all of the shots that you plan to film in your video. Now, there's many ways to do this. Personally, I like to have shots planned by the second in the track. So if you have the track, you just listen and then you plan from 0 to 5 seconds is this shot, from 5 to 7 seconds is this shot, and you plan it throughout the track like that. So then, when you're playing the track and you're filming it along, it's really easy to keep track of. Now sometimes you're not going to have a track. Maybe you're filming something live or something like that. Well in that case what I like to do is just plan out a bunch of ideas for shots and then when I get to the shoot, just film a bunch of those. Do a bunch of runs with the musician and kind of just get a bunch of different takes until I feel like I have enough to make something that looks good. And whether you have a well-developed shot list or don't, you're probably going to still have to do multiple runs to make sure that you have something good. It's a good practice. Now, also before you get to the shoot, you're going to want to make sure you tell your performers, whether they're musicians or actors, to make sure that they really have everything well rehearsed and memorized. One of the most unprofessional looking things in a music video is if your musician is literally reading off lyrics. That's not something that really carries across the emotion that it should. And then it's just more like they're doing almost like a live stream kind of thing where it's they took a request to do a song rather than this is a scripted out music video. So if you're going to have a scripted out music video, make sure your performers are aware that it's expected of them to have everything memorized. Now of course this is going to make it harder to get good takes. Sometimes it will take a very long time. One way you can assist in making this as easy as possible is by having a good speaker on set so when you're playing back the track, the musician can hear it and they can perform along with it very easily. Now, when we did our happy video, my speaker was not so great. It kept cutting out because it just has a really weak Bluetooth signal. It might seem crazy oh God. What I'm about to okay. say. It, it, it lagged. So it was kind of hard for us to start because it kept cutting out the first part of the music and then it threw everyone off guard. You should also be patient with your performers. They might not understand what your ideas are and what you have in mind. So if they're not doing something quite right, have patience and just carefully explain it to them and just be aware that you're probably going to have to do multiple runs either way. And that's kind of just the nature of this, is that it's going to take a few times to get what you want to happen. Now let's talk about using the camera. The number one thing, make sure your camera is focused. If you're not focused, your video will not look good at all. Sometimes the major difference, at least to me, between a very professional looking video and a completely unprofessional, low quality looking video is the focus. And it doesn't even have to be a good camera to focus. Now if you're just shooting off of an iPhone and it has autofocus, then you don't have to worry as much. But if you're shooting off of a DSLR and you have a focus ring, you should turn off autofocus and learn to manually focus your camera so that you have more control over what you want in focus. And I'm saying this from experience. If you look back at our very first music video, Mary Did You Know, a few of the shots I forgot to focus and it makes it look significantly lower in quality. Another thing that I tend to pay a lot of attention to is the distance that the camera is from things. So for instance, there's a trick that I learned with zoom lenses on cameras. So you have to have a zoom lens for this to work. But if you step back, so increase the distance between your subject and your camera, and then you zoom in on your subject so it's like you were closer, what will happen is the background will be less in focus. It will be more blurry and your subject will still be in focus. So if you don't know camera terminology, this is basically saying that you will have a shallower depth of focus, meaning the amount of space front to back that is in focus is now smaller. And it's kind of a fun little trick that makes it look like you have nicer equipment than you actually do. And when you mix this with good lighting, you can get a really cool effect. For instance, one of the shots that I got in our Danny Boy video looked really great and I used that effect. I was actually really far away from the subject when I shot that. Now, another thing to really be careful about is if you're working with a lot of people on set, you need to be really cautious of how long things are taking and really keep track of the time. 
because people will naturally get antsy, especially if you're not making use of them. If you think the shoot's gonna be so long that you need to provide food, you should probably do it. Give them some incentive, be nice about it, and don't torture them. And if you're trying to get things done and you think that all the people you have on set are a little distracting, it's okay to be assertive, but don't be rude about it, because they might not know. Maybe they're just extras, or maybe they're people that aren't entirely familiar with you know, the process of making a music video or any production. This applies to anything. So you need to not be completely rude to them. It's all about just being assertive and thinking about what happens next and just keeping everything moving at a very fast pace despite any errors that may arise. So that's a basic introduction slash analysis of what we do. So I hope you enjoyed that and of course as always if you have any questions please leave a comment below we would be happy to reply to anything that you're curious about. And with that, I hope you learned something from this. And stay tuned in a couple of weeks. And part four will be about editing the videos. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.